Hey guys, this is Johan, and in this video I'll be showing you how to feed and care for fish that are suffering from swim bowel disease. Alright guys, so my white line trigger is suffering from swim bladder issues. As you can see in this clip, he's swimming normally and just being himself. Now he's unable to swim and hunt and feed himself, so most of the time he's usually hiding in the rock work and only comes out to get fed or reposition himself. If you guys didn't know, the swim bladder is responsible for allowing the fish to raise and lower itself in the water column. This is done by increasing the amount of oxygen or decreasing the amount of oxygen in the swim bladder. Another function of the swim bladder is to act as a resonance chamber as it produces and receives sounds kind of like a holosona works. This works in hand with the ladder line to allow the fish to hear and see where it swims. Most fish with swim bladder issues usually can't swim properly as they are unable to adjust their buoyancy in the water column. Most times you will see the fish squirming across the bottom or in some cases upside down at the water surface. Another odd thing you may notice is that the fish may bounce into objects as if he was blind. In most cases, swim bladder problems aren't fatal. As long as the fish is eating healthy, it usually resolves itself. In the quest to find a cause or a cure, I came across three different possible causes. One, a bacterial infection. Two, a constipated fish. Or three, in my case, a drastic change in the water parameters. So my cause was because of a drastic change in water parameters. This happened after simple water change. I usually do a 35 to 40% water change in my 75 gallon tank. Um, on this particular day, I started mixing water on a Sunday and I usually mix the water within two days. But unfortunately, I came down with the flu, so um, the water stayed mixing for five days. Um, then and on the fifth day, I felt a little better, so I um, went out and did a chest test the um, salinity. After um, seeing that the water parameters at 1.00, I went to my LFS to just get some salt mix. I used Rift Crystals, but on this day they didn't have any and my order hadn't come in yet so I just decided to get some instant ocean I thought hey it's the same company and um, same salt they just add additives to one and not to the other so after I only put um, only one cup in and that equals to two gallons in my case and in a 36 gallon mixing tank I put the one cup in um, within an hour or and a half or so the um, water looked brown there was a whole bunch of um, brown particles floating in the water and was stuck to the side of the mixing container now if you use um, Roof crystals in the past, or anybody who has experience with roof crystals, they will know that after mixing roof crystal for so long, the particles precipitate out, and that's where the brown residue comes out sometimes. So I thought, hey, it's nothing, I'll just go ahead and add it to the tank. So after a day or so after the water change, everything seemed fine, um, fish were happy, corals were still open and nothing seemed all out of the mess. And this is, like I said, um, something that if you're a customer of reef crystals, if you mix the water for too long, it does happen. So I didn't pay it any mind. Um, I went to work, came back home on the second day after the water change and I could not find my trigger. He's usually the first one 
at the corner of the tank looking at me when I come through the door. He, it's either him or my angel. And I couldn't find my um, well, an intruder. He just wasn't there. Um, I looked through the tank and he was hidden behind one of the rock work on the right side of the tank. The only other thing that gave me indication was the water change was my Clark Hick Clown. Um, this happened to him a long time ago um, when I did a bad water change with too much, with less, um, for lower solidity, and um, he had got Popeye. So right then and there, I knew something was wrong with the water change. So in doing some research and trying to find a cure for my fish, I found a few treatments. The only problem was that a lot of the treatments, or just about all of them, were for freshwater fish. And it's like swim bladder problems don't really happen in saltwater tanks. Um, I couldn't find it anywhere, so I just said, let me try um, what I found and see if they work. So in all the treatments I found, there are only three or four that I'm willing to try on my fish. And the most popular is using green peas. Um, what you do is you boil it and then you feed it to your fish. And in all the stories and videos I've seen, it usually has effect within hours and the fish is usually back to normal. The only problem is my uh, trigger is carnivorous and he doesn't like veggies at all. Um, I tried it a couple times, um, but he seems to just speed it back up. Um, so what I may have to do is blend it into his his food the second treatment which i tried and i had a little bit more luck with was to raise the temperature um so i took him out and i put him in my quarantine tank and i raised the temperature to about 90 for a week or so um and it seemed to work it didn't work fully but he was able to swim to the top and receive food but he always dropped back to the bottom but that only worked for a week or so and he just stayed at the bottom after that um so I couldn't keep him in the quarantine too long because I did have another fish in there um, and I think it had eggs so I didn't want to risk him getting sick and also he uses up quite a big fish and he's in a 20 gallon tall and it's only about 12 inches wide and he's a big fish he needs some swimming room even though he doesn't swim that much but he does from, he does from time to time scooter around the bottom and he needs extra space to swim. The third treatment which I'm willing to try is an Epsom salt bath. This acts as a laxative and allows the fish to pass waste. I have seen it work on freshwater fish, but I am still a little bit hesitant to use it on my fish because this is a different type of salt that I'll be adding to a saltwater fish. So I don't know how his reactions would be. Um, I haven't seen any proper documentation how it's done in a saltwater fish, so I have to do proper research before I put my fish under such stress. The fourth treatment which I found and I am currently using is just simply being patient and allowing the fish to recover on its own. As long as the fish is able to maintain his weight and his diet, then the fish will recover eventually. And being patient is something we do in this hobby, so I don't mind just waiting on the fish to recover on its own. So in this next clip, I'll show you how I feed my trick. So I usually start by thawing some mysis and brine shrimp in a container with some squid and some silk on and just letting that sit for like 15 minutes. After that, I approach the tank and if the trigger is out and looking for me, I usually go in the tank and pick him up as you can see in this clip. I just use a syringe, I suck the mysis shrimp in and then I uh, give him, you know, one, maybe two squirts in his mouth and then wait for him chew and swallow. Um, and this time you gotta remember to feed your fish because if not they will come again the way as you can clearly see um, just being an, <laughs> an annoyance um, but you know um, one or two pumps and let him or her just ch chow down for a little bit and let him eat um, and a quick disclaimer um, all my fish are accustomed to me handling them so you have to be careful when you handle your fish because you might stress them out a little bit um, so just be careful picking them up. Um, even now when I pick him up, he still grunts at me and squirms a little bit. So just keep that in mind when you are doing this. All right, guys, that's pretty much how I take care of my white line trigger. I hope you guys liked it and enjoy the rest of the video.